What's up guys, welcome back. I recently finished this figure and I wanted to share some of my thoughts on it with you. But first, a friend of the channel has just started a new miniature company called Diddy Miniatures. Hey, it's the Kujo, riding with the Boojo, do a little Dujo, Kooji Mooji Booji. That was him there. He has a nice growing selection of figures that all come in different sizes and he's also running a big miniature painting convention and painting competition in December. Slayer Sword winner Albert Moretto Font is going to be one of the judges so it should be pretty good. I've left the link below so you can check it out. So with the exception of the base I did all the work for this model off camera. If you've never tried filming yourself painting it's actually pretty tricky. Without the camera, I tend to move around quite a lot. I'll have the model up high near my face and I'm constantly turning it around so that I can easily reach different angles. But when filming, you simply can't do that. To get usable footage, you need to keep the mini in one spot and hold it as still as possible. This can be quite uncomfortable and it really ramps up the difficulty level of what is already quite challenging. Because of this, occasionally I like to paint something without any restrictions, just to have a break and keep things fun for myself. Having said that, I did document the process with photographs, but that's a lot less hassle and it doesn't really interfere with the painting itself. I got the main figure from Hassle Free Miniatures and at only 20mm tall, it might be one of the smallest models I've ever painted. Working on a mini this size becomes quite a technical challenge. Your brush control needs to be very precise, especially when you're doing things like the face. Often you're working on details that are only fractions of a millimetre, so any tiny slip up can make quite a big difference. Perhaps because of that extra difficulty, I find that I get a lot of satisfaction from working on this scale. If you're interested in seeing the painting process, there's an in-depth PDF guide available on my Patreon feed. I used a very limited palette throughout, restricting myself to one warm colour, one cold, a brown and some black and white. I really enjoy sticking to a small selection of paints. It might seem like it would be limiting, but actually having less paints to juggle frees you up as you're not constantly searching for the right colour. You only have three on your palette, so just pick one. Having lots of options, in theory, gives you more creative potential, but in reality, you can easily fall into a kind of analysis paralysis. There's just so many options. Miniature painting is already complicated, so why not make things easier on yourself with a simple palette? Originally, I had planned on a much more elaborate base. The main idea was to have a little orphaned warrior who spends his days running around a ruined castle fighting butterflies. But I got a bit carried away and ended up with something that was way too big for the model. So I made this scaled down version, which ended up being a much better fit. I used the golden ratio to create the composition. Roman Lepat often talks about this and it's a great way to achieve maximum aesthetic. By using these same paints on both the figure and the base, we were able to achieve a colour harmony that's pleasing to the eye. Notice we also created a subtle triangle where you have three points of the same colour. I talked about applying this idea to your miniatures in an old video, but you can also integrate it into your bases. It helps to spread the colour throughout the whole scene, and as the bricks are less saturated than the pink of the hair, it draws your eyes upwards towards the face of the figure. In fact, if you look closely, every part of the base is designed to pull attention towards the model. Notice the way these slabs at the front form a little winding path leading us up to the figure. The small tree on the left effectively forms an arrow swooping down towards it. This is then reinforced with the three little butterflies deliberately placed along that imaginary arc that's cutting through the scene. We've also made sure to have more stuff on the left than on the right. Typically your eyes are more drawn to larger elements first, so this helps lead the viewer's gaze from left to right, like reading the pages of a book. 
If you want to learn more about how I created this base, there are two in-depth videos covering the whole process available in both the YouTube member section and my Patreon feed. When I look at the finished piece, I'm quite happy with the result. I like the colour balance and I think the palette fits the character of the main figure really well. There's only a few small things I could see myself improving. I could have chosen a better piece for the tree. I like the shape and the way the roots come down over the wall, but it's lacking in detail. Something more gnarly and maybe a bit thicker would have looked a lot better. Also, I could have definitely done more with the fur cloak. Rather than having it a single colour, if I had added a colour change, maybe something like a wolf hide pattern, that would have made it more interesting. But apart from those small things, I think it's quite successful. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts.